Hi, Rama. It's week 17, day four of our Bible narrative reading plan. Today we're in 1 Samuel chapter 15. We saw in chapter 13 that the Lord has rejected Saul as king because Saul has not obeyed the voice of the Lord. We're reminded in chapter 14 of his weak and indecisive leadership. But in chapter 15, we get a, a second account, a second time that Saul does not obey the voice of the Lord. It's a very somber, sobering chapter. In the beginning of the chapter, chapter 2, it tells us uh, what God is telling Saul to do. He's to take the, the people, the Amalekites, the people who uh, have oppressed the people of God, even going back to the Exodus, Exodus chapter 17. And now God is telling him to set them apart for destruction, not to leave any alive. Now, I have to just pause there. The text doesn't really go into this, but we need to be reminded that even as we see things like this in, in the Old Testament, and we think sometimes, how could God uh, tell them to go and kill every woman, even down to the children? Uh, it's a reminder that God's judgment will come to each and every person. These are not innocent people. All of them, even down to children, stand guilty before a holy God. And this picture is the, the judgment and the justice that will ultimately come one day for anyone who is not covered by the blood of Christ. So these are not innocent people in the way that we think of innocence. They are guilty before God, and God is telling Saul to carry out judgment upon them. And so Saul gathers the armies, he gathers the people, and they defeat them soundly, but he doesn't actually destroy everyone as he has been told to do. Uh, chapter 9 says he spares the king, Agag, and he, he spares the best of the sheep and of the oxen, of the fattened calves and the lambs, and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But all that was despised and worthless, now that was set apart for destruction. And the story continues, verse 10, the word of the Lord comes to Samuel, and he says, I regret that I've made Saul king. Not regret in the sense that God doesn't know uh, what's going to happen, but regret in the sense that this grieves God greatly. Saul's sin is grievous towards God. And Samuel is angry when he hears this from the Lord, and he cries out to the Lord, praying all night. And then early the next morning, Samuel goes to meet Saul, and uh, Saul tries to begin the conversation saying uh, very nice, pious things to Samuel. And Samuel just gets right to the point, what is this sound? What is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen that I hear? Saul, you were supposed to obey the voice of the Lord. What is this sound that I hear? And Saul tries to reply with very spiritual, religious-sounding answers. I, I've kept the best things apart for God, but he's disobeyed the voice of the Lord again. And Samuel just cuts him off, and he says, Stop. I will tell you what the Lord said to me this night. And so Samuel goes through, and, and he tells uh, Saul, how God, again, is taking the kingdom away from him, that Saul has not listened and obeyed the voice of the Lord. And he asked him this powerful statement in chapter 15, verse 21, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? We see this all throughout the, the scriptures, the Bible as a whole, that we can act spiritual, we can do all these spiritual things, but we must obey the voice of the Lord. This is what God is asking of Saul. It's what he's asking of us, that we do what he's told us to do, that we show our love for Christ by obeying his commands. In verse 24, Saul says, I have sinned. It sounds like he's confessing, but actually he's just putting the blame on the people. He says, I feared the people and I obeyed their voice. Again, instead of the voice of the Lord. And Samuel is done. He, he's done with this conversation. He turns to walk away, and Saul reaches out, grabs him, and he winds up tearing a piece of his robe in the process, tearing a piece of Samuel's robe. Samuel turns around and looks at him and says, Just as you've torn this piece of my robe, so has God torn the kingdom from your hand, and he will give it to your neighbor, uh, referring to David, of course, in the future. And he says that the glory of the Lord will not lie. I mean, the glory of Israel, referring to the Lord God, will not lie or have regret, for he is not a man that he should have regret. So even as it sounded as if God was regretting something in the way that we think of regret, God will not lie and God will not have regret because uh, God would not allow his name to be mocked in the way that Saul is mocking the name of the Lord. And Saul says again, I have sinned, yet would you honor me by going with me back uh, to the people? Basically, he says, look, I, I know I did the wrong thing, but, but can you just help me put up a good face for the people of Israel. 
And this shows us that Saul has not repented. He's not genuinely sorry for what he's done. We're going to see that David is also a great sinner. But when David sins, he listens to the voice of the Lord. He listens to the voice of Nathan the prophet and he truly repents. But Saul does not repent. He is not seeking the voice of the Lord. He will not obey God. And the chapter ends reminding us that Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. But Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord regretted, he grieved, that he had made Saul king over Israel. Again, not that any of this caught God by surprise, but Saul's great sin grieves the heart of God. And so does our great sin. And so we look to Christ seeking his comfort that we might obey God, knowing that obeying God is the way we show our love for him. It's much better than these false acts of religious service as Saul attempted to do. Here's a summary of today's reading. For more information, go to tunemyheart.org.